it works. Keep the evil one away with these four powerful ways. Curious about the way to keep Satan at bay? Want to know how to stop the devil from dancing a path at your door? Then follow the guide to maintaining your path of righteousness while protecting yourself against his tempting assortment of sins and is masquerading as a beacon of virtuousness and light to follow. First things first, the history of Satan. But firstly, a little background on the history of Satan. Satan is a figure who appears in the texts of the Abrahamic religions, and although his exact definition and characteristics may vary slightly among the different religious groups, there is absolute agreement that he is the great deceiver and the entity who brings evil and temptation to our lives as he attempts to lead humanity astray. And his great talent is that he is able to persuade us that he does not exist. In Christianity and Judaism, Satan is traditionally identified as the serpent who tempted Eve to eat the forbidden fruit, and also a fallen angel who once possessed a great piety and beauty, and who rebelled against God, and was subsequently banished from heavens and thrown into an eternal lake of fire, which we of course know as hell. In Islam, he's known as Shaitan, whose personal name was Iblis, and according to the Quran, Iblis was either a jinn that is a demon or an angel, a fallen angel, a matter of debate amongst Muslim scholars, who disobeyed God by refusing to bow down to Adam after his creation and was thus cast out of heaven. You see, the reason that Satan rebelled was the fact that God was to create man and position him at the level of angels. Now how to protect yourself? So what can we do to protect ourselves from also falling into the fiery pit of hell when our judgment day beckons? Well the first thing is to love God with all your might and to keep his commandments. When you don't keep his commandments that's how the demonic entities energies enter you. You lose Holy Spirit and the opposite enters you. So number one Frequent the sacraments of confession and the Holy Eucharist. In the uh, Old Testament, it was usually once a month. And uh, that's a good thing to do now as well. Once a month is pretty good. You can go every day. The monks, for example, in the Orthodox Christian religion, can um, have uh, confession every day because they have Holy Eucharist every day as well. Now. As we said, the sacraments of Holy Confession and Holy Eucharist, that's why our Lord Jesus Christ gave us sacraments to protect ourselves. These are the greatest weapons. The most amazing miracle in existence is the fact that the Holy Eucharist is the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, strangely enough, all the major Abrahamic religions again line up in a row they all preach that closely following the teachings of God is laid down in their respective religions, works, or Bibles that will help us resist the temptations of mortal sin and stop the attack of a demon or a jinn in its tracks. Um, reading the Holy Bible is like praying as well. Reading is praying. Studying, learning the law is also like praying. Two, constant prayer life. In Christianity, there's also specific advice on regular confession and the taking of the Holy Eucharist, and most importantly, the daily prayer. The best holy prayer, the daily prayer, the strongest that brings down the Holy Spirit, is the prayer of the Lord Jesus, the Jesus prayer. As we know, it's called the Jesus prayer. And that's, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison. Uh, and also the long form is, Our Lord, Je Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, the sinner. 
The short form is, Lord have mercy. It brings the Holy Spirit down to us, down to the area where we live, and cleanses the area of all demons. Um, so as we said, the uh, Christian in, in Christianity, we said with the Holy Confession, taking of the Holy Eucharist, most importantly, daily prayer. Now, for such an evil character, it's rather paradoxic that almost amongst religions who seem to take great glee in constantly committing atrocities against one another, but yet we are all born out of Judaism, and he is one figure who remains constant in each of their teachings, and perhaps he could even be a reconciliatory cog in the harmonious and peaceful unification of the various religious branches. Could he be a devil in disguise, or could he simply be living up to his name as the great deceiver and using this article as a medium for a positive public relation exercise? Number three, fasting. That is a great weapon. If you can say no to something, you can say no to sin. Besides that, fasting is also used for fixing things. Um, Prayer with fasting is a very huge weapon. And we saw that many a time in the Old Testament when uh, the Jewish people were almost annihilated. They would run to fasting and prayer. And a three-day fast with prayer makes miracles. It can even stop a war. Whether the war is in your soul or in your family or uh, you want to fix something, something. Uh, we have a saint in the Orthodox Christian religion she is uh, Saint Irene Chrysovalantu, and uh, basically the uh, ascetic uh, practice, praying with her, for her, to help, is this fast for three days. Women fast for three days without oil. In other words, you can have macaroni with tomato sauce without oil. Um, you can have some uh, a salad without oil something very, very ascetic. Usually for men, it's only one day fast because men work and they get, they need to, they get very weak if they don't eat all day. Uh, women can hold on with a, a three-day fast. So fasting with prayer is a very strong weapon. Fasting is number three. This advice comes straight from the Gospels when Jesus said to his disciples, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer and fasting. He was referring to a demon that was uh, difficult, had difficulty coming out of the person. This is in Mark 9, 29. So each of us must discern what kind of fasting we are called to practice. Uh, our church has uh, uh, told us that the best way to do it is, for example, the fasting days, the regular fasting days that we have in Orthodoxy is every Wednesday and Friday. Every Wednesday and Friday, give these days for fasting for our Lord Jesus Christ. And he will use them for us, for our families, for the whole world, for the whole universe. Wednesday and Friday, don't eat meat, don't eat dairy. Uh, you'll find plenty of beautiful other things to eat, uh, which are very tasty as well. You're not going to suffer from it. And also we have other fasts during the year. For example, we have the 40-day fast, the Lent before Easter. We have the Christmas fast 40 days before Christmas. We have 15 days before the Dormition of our Mother, Holy Mother, Theodokos, the Mother of God. That's from August 1st to August 15th. And then we have the 15 days of the Holy Apostles from June 15th to June 30th, June 29th. So those are the fasts that we have. They're not difficult to keep, actually. And uh, we, the good thing is that when you do fast, especially during the Lent of Easter and Christmas, you have, uh, you can feel it in your soul that something is taking place. You're giving and you're also receiving. You can feel the spiritual receiving of grace from our Lord Jesus Christ. Number four. Sacramentals. Exorcists and uh, not uh, not only use sacramentals. The rite of exorcism is a sacramenta, a 
in sacramental, but advise possessed persons to frequently use sacramentals. They are a powerful weapon in the daily fight to keep the devil away from ever coming back. Exorcists suggest such sacramentals as blessed salt, blessed water, not only be kept at home, but to be brought along wherever a person goes. In the Orthodox Church, we have a blessing of the water every month. We have holy water. And this is something that the devil, of course, hates. We bring the holy water back to us. We spray it in our, onto our, into the air of our home. And we also drink it. And uh, when you're sick, for example, you can put it on the area that is hurting you. Um, and also put it on you and you can drink it. Now you say, well, what's wrong with, uh, you know, how different is holy water from regular water? Well, Japanese scientists have al already proven that when you pray over water, it changes. They have taken images of water that has been prayed over and frozen and they have taken images of the frozen water and have uh, seen that the images of the frozen water that has been prayed over has beautiful shapes to it. Whereas if they pray over the water with curses and bad thoughts, the water takes on the shape of what they're praying. Ugly black uh, figures of grotesque shapes. So that has been proven already. And since our body is like what they say, two, uh, three quarters water, uh, you can imagine how good it is for us to pray for ourselves and for others around us. Especially even for those who are not converted to faith yet in Jesus Christ. So the uh, final word goes to Matthew, who in his gospel said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door shall open. The answers are there. And one more last beautiful thing I'd like to leave you with because I don't want to forget. We remember the Psalms of David. David, who in his youth killed Goliath. The Psalms are what he used to sing to King Saul, who was demon-possessed. And King Saul would be healed by listening to David reading and singing the Psalms. So the Psalms, as we know, also are a very good weapon to keep the evil one at bay. The Psalms are also a brief of the whole Holy Bible, with the prophecies of everything in the Holy Bible. It's what the monastics in the Orthodox Christian tradition read every single day, 20 Psalms a day. And this is very easily proven in the water, the power of prayer. The image on the left is of an ice crystal frozen from severely polluted water. The image on the right is the same water, the same exact water frozen after having been blessed. In other words, prayed over by Dr. Emoto, who was doing the research. So one can plainly see that we do have the ability to not only heal ourselves, but our earth as well, and our universe. And this is another example, the image on the left, water that has been exposed to the words, you make me sick, I will kill you. You can see how terrible it looks. And the one on the right says, uh, it was prayed over with the words, thank you, you are beautiful. And my wish for you, may our Lord Jesus Christ come and live in your hearts. May he bring you to divine union with him, to theosis, which is the purpose of man's life. We were created in God's image to be united to him. <laughs>